Welcome back. Now, as the breakaway Republic of Somaliland grapples with a severe drought, medical workers there are struggling to help people who have been weakened by hunger. Abdulaziz Osman filed that story from Erigavo, the capital of Sanag region. Zero Hospital is operating beyond full capacity to treat people affected by the drought. And it's the only hospital in Somaliland, Sanag region. The drought has left tens of thousands of children acutely malnourished. In desperate need of treatment, they are checked as they lie on the beds in the stabilization center ward. The hospital's director says most of the admitted children come from rural areas. The drought forced most pastoralists to move from one area into another. Some came to the cities, but most of the malnourished children admitted here are from the rural area. Adiris Salah, a 14-month-old boy, weighed just over 6 kilograms when he was brought to the hospital from the Darar IDP camp. His mother, fighting back tears, says her son was suffering from severe diarrhea and malnutrition. His doctor said Salah is improving and now weighs 7.2 kilograms. He was very weak when he was referred here. His weight and height were too low. We put him in the stabilization center as he was in the severely malnourished cafeteria. The initial phase, he couldn't take the feeding or the milk, so we inserted the NG tube to increase his feeding. Now, he still has the NG tube. Medical officials say some families in the drought-stricken area cannot afford to bring their children to local medical centers, but doctors and encourage parents to make the trip if they can. In rural areas, sometimes families with malnourished children are not able to bring them to hospitals. So, for example, if a mother has 10 kids and five of them are malnourished, we beg her to bring the sick children to a hospital. The United Nations has said more than 6 million people across Somalia and Somaliland are in need of help due to the extended drought, which shows no sign of ending. For Abdulaziz Osman, I'm Robert Rafael, VOA News. Well, disease affects the plant world as well. And since 1993, Africa's largest coffee producer, Uganda, has been battling a coffee wilt disease. But now, with the help of entrepreneurs, a wilt-resistant variety of seedlings is becoming popular with local farmers. Take a look. Betty Nduga is an entrepreneur in Uganda's Luero district, whose coffee bean nursery serves as a source of improved seedlings for local farmers. Previously a clothing trader in the capital Kampala, she returned to her village where she received training in coffee production from a local farmer field school supported by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. Katiwano. Starting with barely 50 coffee seedlings, which grew to 10,000 seedlings by the next season, the coffee farmer says today she has 220,000 seedlings in this nursery, which she inherited from her parents. Coffee bean is Uganda's top export crop. However, since 1993, coffee wilt disease has destroyed over 12 million plants here forcing many smallholder farmers to abandon their coffee plantations. The newly developed wilt-resistant variety brings renewed hope for smallholder farmers. Being a widow who knows the vulnerability of female-headed households in rural Uganda, Betty says the nursery has helped to support her family and encourages women to look towards entrepreneurship. Uh. The resistant seedlings also enjoy good patronage from the Uganda Coffee Development Authority, which distributes them to farmers while also providing training in the drive to revive the sector. We have taken 250 seedlings, 
that after like some two years to come, I will be able to yield. Then I sell and I, I add on my income, educate my children, looking after my family, and all the basic needs. With this scheme, Uganda, Africa's largest coffee exporter, hopes to boost production of the crop. But entrepreneurs and local farmers say one of the major hurdles they face is access to water. Many, like Betty, have to go as far as one kilometer to a community borehole. Well, our tuberculosis kills hundreds of thousands of people every year. But just six countries account for nearly two-thirds of cases. That's India, Indonesia, China, Nigeria, Pakistan, and South Africa. But as Henry Ridgewell reports, resistant forms of that bacteria are undermining new treatments. Tuberculosis, or TB, is the most deadly infectious disease in the world. World TB Day aims to highlight the burden carried by some of the most marginalized communities. Every single day, 5,000 people lose their life because of tuberculosis. And TB hits uh, particularly those vulnerable populations that include migrants, refugees, prisoners, uh, people who are marginalized in their societies. TB is rife in African townships like Kyalicha near Cape Town, South Africa, one of the largest and fastest growing communities in the country. In recent years, drug resistant strains of TB have taken hold around the world, posing an increasingly urgent public health threat. These strains often go undetected and are spread across populations. Dr. Kirtan Deda, head of the Division of Pulmonology at the nearby University of Cape Town, spoke to VOA via Skype. In South Africa, for example, uh, TB is the commonest cause of death and uh, the disease is out of control in Africa. But there is new hope. A small number of new drugs have become available. Uh, for the first time, uh, after about four to five decades, uh, we have two drugs. One is called bedaquiline that has now been registered in South Africa and is available to treat mainly patients with drug-resistant TB. And there's another new drug called Delaminate uh, that is not yet licensed in South Africa, but is available in other countries. In a report published in the Lancet Medical Journal, Data and his co-authors warn that the effectiveness of these new drugs could be lost if they are not used correctly and dispensed quickly. We need to change our strategy. We need to go out into the community and find these cases. We have to address the major drivers of TB, which is poverty and overcrowding, nutritional deprivation, uh, alcohol abuse, uh, cigarette smoking and biomass fuel exposure. Authors of the report say the new drugs must be prescribed as individually targeted treatments with clear dosing guidelines to prevent further resistant TB strains from emerging. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. Stand now for another break. A reminder to visit channelcv.com for news and information around the clock. You can also find us at youtube.com forward slash channels web. Still to come. An iconic American game is helping Somali youths in Minneapolis gain personal confidence and improve their hoop skills at the same time. We'll bring you that in a moment. Join us again.